Dragon Ball Z has quite a massive amount of villains throughout several arcs that may leave one skeptical about who truly ranks above the others. Although the series well establishes the top of the pecking order regarding the main villains, there are some in between whose placings aren't quite concise. So to help clear it up, we'll be counting down the strongest of Dragon Ball Z's main series villains. Before we dive into this definitive list, be sure to hit that red subscribe button to be up to date with the latest Screen Rant content. Coward! Come on, let's finish this fight! Aren't you angry? Vegeta. The Prince of Saiyans Vegeta did eventually become an ally and friend to the Z Fighters, but during the beginning of the series he was the strongest amongst the Saiyan elite. His power was well beyond the might of his father, King Vegeta, Bardock, and other Saiyans who were already considered powerful among the warrior race. His strength was not hyperbole, since even Goku's Kaioken times 4 Kamehameha and Spirit Bomb proved futile against the Prince, who actually survived the flurry of attacks, albeit with heavy injury. He aided the Z Fighters and eventually became one of the strongest of Earth's protectors, but by that point, he was a good guy already. Man, what did Bulma do to that guy? Captain Ginyu! Captain Ginyu. Although Frieza's henchmen, Zarbon and Dodoria, proved to be quite cunning, they were soon defeated by Vegeta's massive Zankai boosts. Due to this, Frieza decided to call an elite squadron known as the Ginyu Force, a five-man team with strange abilities and great power alike, to take care of the trash. Once Goku effortlessly defeated them, Captain Ginyu stepped up to the plate and pushed Goku into using his Kaioken technique. Once he realized that he was outmatched, he decided to swap Goku's body with his own in attempts to usurp the Z Fighters. He was eventually defeated by Vegeta, and Goku obtained his body once more to fight the ultimate space emperor. Try as I might, I can't think of a reason to spare you. Uh, uh, Frieza. Frieza definitively did become a lot stronger during Dragon Ball Super to the point he far eclipsed everyone within Dragon Ball Z, including Super Vegeta. But during the main series, he was far from being the top dog. Regardless, he was so powerful that even without using 50% of his max power, he was utterly destroying Goku even though he was using the Kaioken times 20. Frieza was just too tough to put down. So tough, in fact, that the spirit bomb was needed in the attempt to end the tyrant's reign. In the end, Frieza decided to slaughter Goku's best friend, Krillin, which awakened the legendary Super Saiyan transformation within Son Goku. You should have kept your little friends out of this, Vegeta. No, don't! Android 18. Ever since the Red Ribbon Army's plans for world domination were foiled by Kid Goku's intervention during the original Dragon Ball series, Dr. Jiro had revenge in mind, in the form of mechanical devils. Although the present day androids were created to exterminate Son Goku, they weren't really that evil, but their future counterparts lived up to the villainous nature one would come to expect. Within Future Trunks' timeline, Android 18, alongside her brother Android 17, exterminated not only the Z Fighters, but also millions of humans around the world. They were eventually obliterated upon Trunks returning to his timeline after helping the present day Z Fighters in the defeat of Perfect Cell. Please don't shoot me! Hey! Sorry, Gramps, you shot first! <laughs> Android 17. As menacing as Frieza was, upon returning to Earth for revenge, he was effortlessly sliced apart by future Trunks. Once the time for the android's arrival was at hand, Android 17 easily knocked out Trunks when he attempted to intervene in the battle between Super Saiyan Vegeta and Android 18. Even two Super Saiyans proved to be fruitless, as the cyborg duo eradicated them alongside Piccolo and Tien. Upon this utter defeat, Piccolo decided to merge with Kami to obtain Super Namekian status, which allowed him to fight on par with 17. Although Although he wasn't the main villain, Android 17 was quite powerful and became far more menacing during Dragon Ball Super. So, there you have it. You could say that I am new and improved. Goku failed, and so will all of you. Perfect Cell. Dr. Giro's ultimate creation came not in the form of the cyborgs, but in the petri dish culminated from not only Goku, but also Prince Vegeta, Krillin, Piccolo, and even Frieza. Cell's objective was to absorb both Android 17 and 18 to achieve perfection. Once he obtained his ultimate transformation, he toyed with Vegeta and Trunks alike, who had obtained the ascended states of the Super Saiyan form. His perfect power was no joke, since even Goku and Gohan's mastered Super Saiyan states were no match for the bug menace. Cell's sadistic nature unlocked the Super Saiyan 2 form within Gohan, which led to his doom pretty soon after. Foolish boy. <laughs> you dare to mock the great Dabura? 
Dabura. The seven long years of peace after the defeat of Cell was soon interrupted by the arrival of the wizard Babidi, who had in mind the rebirth of the galactic terror Majin Buu. However, Babidi wasn't alone in his quest since he was joined by none other than Dabura, the king of the demon realm. Even before facing off against Gohan, Goku believed Dabura to be as powerful as Cell, if not more. The Demon King was able to toy with Gohan, even without unleashing his full power, but his magical sword and stone spit ability proved to be quite difficult to face off against. <laughs> Boo! That was just fantastic! Fat Boo! Don't let his innocent appearance fool you! Fat Boo may look jolly, but he was definitely not a pushover. Right after he emerged from his shell due to the battle between Goku and Vegeta powering his birth, he easily defeated Dabura and proceeded to bully Super Saiyan 2 Gohan and nearly kill off the Supreme Kai. After deciding to cheap shot Goku, Majin Vegeta saw it fitting to end Majin Buu's terror, which unfortunately came at his untimely demise. Even though during this point Vegeta far surpassed Cell and Gohan alike, he was still not powerful enough to put down this genocidal pink blob. Move! Stop! You still owe us a fair fight! A blast that big will destroy the Earth! <laughs> Kid Buu the original form of Majin Buu came in the form of a small yet insanely deadly child of terror, which the Supreme Kai greatly feared. Kid Buu's terror extended towards the furthest ends of the universe, as he decimated trillions of solar systems and even wiped out the Kais who guarded the quadrants of the universe. Although not the strongest incarnation of Majin Buu, Kid Buu was by far the most dangerous one. He would destroy planets without a second thought and gave Super Saiyan 3 Goku a run for his money. After his defeat, he was eventually reincarnated as Ooh who was seen at the end of DBZ and GT. You said you didn't need to merge with Gohan anymore to beat me, so I thought I'd go ahead and take him for myself. <laughs> Super Buhan. Once Fat Boo was eaten by his pure evil self, he transformed into what would become the strongest Majin, known as Super Boo. His power was so great that even a Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks was unable to put him down. But once he absorbed him, he was able to decimate a powered up ultimate Gohan. Unfortunately, after his immense power as Bootanks was short-lived, he had no choice but to absorb Gohan to become the strongest Majin in all of history, future, present, and past alike. Goku and Vegeta had no choice but to use the Potara to fuse into Vegito to defeat him. Buhan is without a doubt the strongest DBZ villain of them all. Say your goodbyes. So, what'd you think of our list? Would you like to see a list of the most powerful villains within Dragon Ball Super, or perhaps other anime series? Be sure to let us know in the comments section below, and be sure to subscribe to Screen Rant. Thanks a whole bunch for watching.